There's so much attention now on Formula One, Yost. And of course, much of that has been driven by a Netflix show. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think the, especially the, the hype that Formula One has in the US now is driven by the Netflix show Drive to Survive. Um, we worked very close with the Netflix guys last year as uh, there's one episode from in the series four. It's dedicated to Williams and it's the fight of the team for the first points again. And uh, I, I really like it. I think when, when I look how the episode went out and, and how it is, I think it's very realistic. And it's quite, it shows the public that it's not just about uh, the two, three drivers who fight for the win. You see how dedicated the team is to get its first point again. And you can't see that when you follow the races because you don't know what is behind that. And I think there the show does a fantastic job and see how, how dedicated a team has to fight to come back from tents and uh, get the first points again and how the relief that is for the team and what work is behind to, to change a team, make a team successful again. I think that it's, it's, for me, I believe it's very worthwhile to watch. At the beginning, I said, I, I don't want to watch it and this is not real. But then I started looking into it because I had to and I found it adds a big value to, to Formula One fans and people who want to know a lot about, for, uh, about Formula One. And I think it's very close to reality. Does it surprise you how open Formula One is now relative to where it was the last time that you were involved? I mean, the previous administration had, had no interest in, in uh, uh, opening the velvet ropes or pulling the curtain back. Now, all of a sudden, everything is out there. It's, it's such a difference, right, Ghost? Yeah, it's a huge difference, and but also the technical opportunities are much better. I think when you look back in Formula One, the TV uh, quality they had and the broadcast they had, that, that was very much ahead of any other sport through the years. But of course, the times have changed. And uh, with an American company coming in and running the sport based on how sport is also run in the US, this is very successful. And now also with the CEO of Stefano Dominicali, who has been in Formula One long time. Uh, yeah, and, and, and he has been in the automotive industry. I think they have found the perfect CEO now to combine the values of Formula One, but also getting out in public and, and show the real nature of the sport and make it much more available for everybody. You've lived in, in Michigan for a time. You have obviously uh, worked in North America for, for a, a long time. Does the appeal of Formula One now in the United States, um, has it finally taken hold? Because there's been yeah, a lot of fits like and starts in the, in the past. Yeah, it looks like. You know, my daughter is, is 24. She studied in Boston. She is now back in, in Europe. And she says she gets calls and emails and messages from her friends who were never interested in any racing. And now she gets nearly daily, she gets messages about Williams, about Formula One. And she said, this is amazing to see uh, for especially young people who have never been interested in racing, now getting interested in Formula One. And you see the demographics in the US, it's a very young demographic being interested in Formula One. And it's also a huge amount of, of female fans uh, now in the US created, I, I believe very much to drive to survive. And when you watch drive to survive and then looks in the, in, watch the races and know the characters a bit more, then it makes the races much more interesting. And I uh, think now we have the, had the first race in Miami. Yeah, it was, it was outstanding for the first time was really fantastic. Next year, it's uh, Las Vegas will be added. And we have Austin and we have Montreal and Mexico. So there are five races within US, Canada and Mexico. And uh, I think there is more interest in, in cities to have a Formula One race as they see what business it brings for one week into the cities to have a Formula One race. What an amazing accomplishment for a sport that had global appeal for a long time, but really had a hard time getting going here. I was at the first Detroit race back in the early 1980s. And while there was initial appeal, the problems with the track and, and, and other, other driver related issues, 
it kind of it kind of withered away. And Indianapolis had the same thing. Uh, they they attempted it, and it, again it failed. But but now, as you say, it's taken hold. Yeah, no, I believe it's it's based on drive to survive. Drive to survive made it made it public what Formula One is, and then the the interest in the races uh, started as well. And we look at Miami; that was was a big event. It was a party for the whole week, and <clears throat> and it's still uh, serious racing involved. And I think this combination is very attractive to to people and also to young people. What it was not really before.